All right, so g'day, guys. Uh, today we're speaking with the vocalist for one of Australia's fastest rising prog metal bands, uh, Charlie Powler of Ebon Ivory. How you going, Charlie? Hey, good, good, very good, thanks. So you guys have got a bunch of stuff going on at the moment. Um, let's start off with the new single. Uh, when can we expect to actually get it? Um, so Tales of Termina, the new single, uh, it'll drop on the 27th of September. So it's only a week away now. And uh, how does this yeah. one compare to the rest, rest of your material? Um, this one's sort of a bit, uh, it's a bit riffier, you could say. Um, I think fans of heavier music will be more at home with this one um, compared to uh, the other stuff we've been putting out. But at the same time, it's, um, it's still got that sort of playful, uh, like melodicness about it. Oh, awesome. It's it's a funny funny scene the uh, the music world at the moment uh, when it comes to singles and albums and EPs. Um, are you planning on releasing this as a part of another album or an EP, or is this going to be a standalone release? Um, so this this and our previous singles will all be a part of uh, a bigger picture. Um, so there'll be uh, a fairly large release uh, early next year, I believe. You- um, we've just been sort of biding our time with it. Got heaps and heaps of material recorded, ready to go. And, um, yeah, we're really excited to sort of show the world what we've been up to for the past two or three years. Do you find it's important as a, as a prog band to, um, to release, you know, to have a collection of material that you're going to be putting together in an album form? Um, does it help you tell a story more or do you, are you not too fussed on that? Like, are you going to have a theme um, for the album? No, I, I definitely think, I definitely think, like, when writing an album, it's good to do it all sort of, um, like, you know, in context with, like, have all the songs in context with one another because it's sort of, you, you develop these sort of ideas that are really essential to, like, the whole release. Um, and, yeah, every, all the songs we've been putting out have been linked, you know, in one way or another, where, whether it's, like, you know, melodies tie it together or there's little lyrical references. Um, and that's something really common in our music especially, but also the wider, you know, prog community. Um, yeah, these big sort of grand, not so much narratives, but, you know, uh, themes that sort of permeate each, you know, album or EP. Um, and I think that is really like a core essential of the prog genre. Now, as a vocalist, obviously prog metal is uh, notoriously complicated, even in its most <laughs> simplistic form. Um, do you, what part of it do you find the most challenging and how do you go about, you know, putting together your rhythms and, and do you match your lyrics? Like, do you already have lyrics written or do you? Yeah. Uh, um, so, so I, I write all of our music or the instruments and I record all the instruments minus the drums, um, which Dave takes the lead for. Um, so I have like this sort of, I know where all the music began in a way, which gives me an advantage as a vocalist because um, I sort of know what needs to be there, how, you know, all the chords are, you know, functioning. Um, so melodically, it's all really easy to kind of come up with. But lyrically, um, I always take a lot more time than people would expect to write lyrics because it's sort of like, you know, you've got this three or four minute song that you've put, you know, so much effort into producing the instrumentals for. Um, and, you know, you've, you've got a limited amount of lines to express some, you know, idea that's going on in your head. And it's sort of like, you know, you get one shot at it. And once it's all written there, it's set in stone. And, you know, then the world sees what you've been up to. When you got, oh, well, it's just you really. So, do you have a set formula when you're writing a song? Like, does it start off as a guitar riff or are you, um, are you sitting um, in a bedroom? Are you in a studio? How are you doing it? So I run, I run a studio from home, um, but a lot of ideas sort of just, they just sort of come into you know, my head or something, but they always revolve around one little idea, um, whether it's like you know, a rhythm or some sort of melody or like you know, a chord progression of some sort. And then all of the songs build off from this like central seed point. Um, and then a song just sort of forms around it, I guess. Like the idea might be the bridge of a song or maybe it's like a pre-chorus or something. And everything just sort of comes together. Like, um, you know, I know what goes where and what everything's doing. Um, yeah, so it's sort of, 
it's a weird process, I guess, but it sort of just happens, really. <laughs> and how do you know when a song's done? Like, you've got that much going on. Um, is there a point where you just go, ah, oh, this, this is it, or are you never too sure? <laughs> That's a very good question. That's one I've been asking myself a lot lately. Um, it's sort of, yeah, I guess, I guess the song is never really finished. Um, but, you know, yeah, there is a point where you've got to say, right, you know, I could add this tiny little extra vocal harmony or this tiny little, you know, sound effect in this part or, you know, tweak the delay parameters on this, you know, vocal line or whatever. But um, it's sort of a perfectionism thing. I think um, I think I dive a little too deep sometimes. Going down the rabbit um, hole. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, especially being like the sole writer, um, sometimes it's hard to get feedback. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's really important to get feedback from an outside source because, you know, someone will say, dude, you know, this is awesome. This is ready to go. Um, which sort of, you know, clears up my doubts about, you know, gets me out of that rabbit hole sometimes. <laughs> And uh, so as a writer and a performer, uh, who are your biggest influences? Um, funnily enough, my influences don't really come from metal at all. Um, at least my early influences. Like um, I used to listen to a lot of like punk, like Jimmy Eat World and Blink-182, you know, all those sort of uh, punk bands. And then a lot of uh, like Powderfinger and Grinspoon, like all these awesome Australian rock bands. Um, and then I sort of, I got into metal through, uh, I used to listen to the Mars Volta a lot. They were probably my biggest influence in music. Um, and then a friend of mine showed me Periphery's first album. Um, and I was predominantly a drummer at the time. And I was like, dude, like, this is some crazy stuff. Like, what's going on with the drums? And that sort of just, blew my mind and I wanted to find out more and then I yeah, just went down this path of every, you know, sort of uh, progressive metal band in that sort of style. Like that really, um, like it's not about the brutality of metal. It's about that sort of punchiness and you can still have, you know, really deep musicality to it. Um, so then from there, you know, plenty intervals, um, just all of those, you know, animals as leaders, all those really, uh, titanic, like modern prog bands at the moment. Yeah, for sure. So, so you started off as a drummer and are now doing absolutely everything else apart from the drums. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? Um, so, I started drumming when I was in year five, I think. Um, and yeah, my mum was like, Charlie, you know, you should learn an instrument. What do you want to learn? And I'd just seen School of Rock. Um, and I was like, I want to play the drums. Like, that looks awesome, whatever. So I sort of started doing that. Um, and then it wasn't until maybe five years later that I started playing guitar because um, my older brother played a bit of acoustic guitar. And he was like, you know, here's, here's this riff. Like, I'll teach you how to play Smoke on the Water. Um, and then from there, you know, just fiddling on guitar. I didn't get any lessons for guitar. Um, it was just sort of an organic thing. And then from guitar, I started singing. And then after I was singing, I started playing piano. And it just sort of all, you know, once you learn one instrument, you can pick up another one so much quicker. Um, and playing so many different instruments really gives you, like, a lot of different perspectives when you're writing music as well. Because, you know, you might have an idea when you're playing guitar, it starts as a guitar riff. Or you might have a melodic idea or a you know, chord progression when you're playing the piano and um, it's definitely a, a big advantage, but I'm very glad that I branched out from the uh, the least musical instrument, some might say. <laughs> oh, mate. You sound like a very talented guy. Oh, did you get lessons for all these things or are you self-taught? Or? Uh, I got lessons for drums, but then, yeah, the rest of it was self-taught. Um, just using, you know, the internet is probably the best place you can be at the moment in terms of learning new skills. Um, and just a lot of listening to music really helps when it comes to playing and like being able to like critically analyze music is definitely a big advantage. And that's something that if anyone was looking to get into, you know, playing music, 
listening is probably the best way to start. Moving on to the tour, um, you guys must be pumped to be making another venture around the country. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's very, it's very daunting but very exciting at the same time, I guess. We're uh, um, yeah, everyone's really excited, so we're we're rearing to go. We're obviously uh, here in Adelaide, uh, so you'll be down here on October 11 at the Crown and Anchor. Um, for those of yep. us that haven't had the chance to see you yet, what can we expect? Um, what can you expect? Well, you can expect to see us on stage. I guess that's <laughs> a, a bonus. That's a starting point. But um, yeah, I, I think the rest of the guys are just so talented like behind their instruments, and the performance they put on is just immaculate like i'm so uh grateful to, you know have them on my team um but yeah they, they've been doing a bloody ripper uh stage show so i guess you know really uh really well rehearsed i think we are um so it should be a really good night a very loud night a uh, very emotional night <laughs> cannot wait so look you, i mean you're from the, from country so you could probably relate to this quite well like you know just the difficulties mm. of starting up a band and uh just getting around and getting your name out there and yeah and, you know especially in this kind of climate where there's mm. a thousand bands in every single area uh, just ready to try and take the scene on um what advice would you have for any youngsters that are uh, up and coming and want to start being in a band and getting out there and touring um i mean for bands that have you know already formed and you know playing gigs just keep playing gigs um and, you know, set, it's good to set goals and, like, be re realistic about goals um, because, you know, you've, you've got to take it one step at a time. Um, and, yeah, just play as many shows as you can because, you know, they'll, they'll, you might play a show to 10 people, but one of those 10 people could be a really, you know, critical person, whether it's, you know, maybe they're a photographer that, um, you know, starts coming to all of your shows and then you've got, you know, really good publicity or they might be a sound engineer or they might be, you know, part of a label. Um, and just, yeah, give every show you a hundred percent because, you know, everyone that comes to see you deserves to have the best show possible. Oh